Hi guys, and welcome back to a new Material 3 video. In this video, you will learn about a navigation drawer in Material 3. So a navigation drawer is in the end just a sheet that slides in from the left, like this one here, where you can navigate to different destinations. And with this navigation drawer, we've also finally finished the navigation related components of Material 3. So uh, these include on the one hand the bottom navigation bar, and then we talked about the navigation rail for tablets in the last video. And in this video, there is the navigation drawer, which you can also use for navigation. So you are quite free in choosing what fits your app the best. So in this video, I will talk about the UX relevant aspects of implementing a navigation drawer, as well as yeah, how you can just implement that in code in Jetpack Compose. This time I have already included these um, standard navigation items, this wrapper class, which I've used in the previous two videos as well. So for the navigation rail and bottom app bar, um, I mean the, the bottom navigation bar. Um, so if this is new to you, then you can just copy the code from GitHub below. If this is not new to you, you can also just copy it from GitHub or from your previous projects, because it's really just a wrapper class for each item. And this wrapper class contains the information we need to display such an item here. So the text, the unselected icon, the selected icon, and a potential batch count. So if there are 45 urgent messages under this tab, for example, then we can also display that with a navigation drawer. Okay, normally we use a scaffold to show these typical um, components from Material 3 with a navigation drawer. However, we have that draw itself as a wrapper around our scaffold. So we have a so-called modal navigation draw. And we can then configure it here. And then we can put a scaffold as the content of that navigation draw. So you will see how that works. Let's see what else we can configure here. We can also set um, the draw state. That is something we want to do. So we can get the draw state like this. Draw state is equal to remember, I think it's modal or remember draw state, yes. The initial value, so whether it's closed or open, is in this case just closed. Alt enter um, to add this experimental API annotation and we then assign this draw state. So this is just a state we can use to also manually open and close our navigation draw. For example, when we click on a button or actually just on the icon up here. So I will also show you how you can set up such a very basic top app bar. I have a video about the, that, that specifically. So if you want to fully uh, understand that in all detail, watch the video about top app bars. In this video, I will just focus on this little menu icon so we can open our navigation drawer. And there are actually three different types of navigation drawers we have in Material 3. On the one hand, it's this modal navigation drawer. So that will open a modal. As you can see here, um, it will come with this scrim color so that it yeah, just darkens the rest of your app a little bit to indicate um, or to really put the focus on the content of the draw. If we then tap outside, it gets hidden. But for tablets, it's also very common that you have a permanently open navigation draw. So that is also possible. Um, I think it's called um, permanent navigation draw, yes. Or you could have a dismissible navigation draw. That is basically a permanent navigation draw, but you can dismiss it. So it's just like the modal with the difference that the navigation draw will push the content to the right when it gets opened, while the modal will display above the content. I will show you all these different uh, variants later when we've impl implemented the most important stuff here. So um, let's have a modal navigation draw again. The draw content is what gets shown on the draw, so our draw items. This content here is the content of our actual screen. So what gets shown um, right here behind the draw. In this case, we want to have a normal scaffold here. And this scaffold will have a top bar, which we use to show the navigation draw. So we can have a top app bar. And again, if you want to learn about top app bars, then watch the separate video in this Material 3 playlist about that. This top app bar will have a title of, let's say, to-do app or so for whatever you're building. We then want to have a navigation icon which is our menu icon. So we want to have an icon button here. The content of that icon button is a normal icon. Um, image vector icons default menu. That is the icon we want to use. Content description could be menu as well. And when we click on this icon button, we want to open our navigation drawer. So 
but that we want to use our draw state, dot open. That is how easy we can open the navigation drawer. You see we get an error here um, because this open function is a suspend function. Therefore, we need to um, call that from a suspend function, uh, from a coroutine. And to do that, we can just get reference to a coroutine scope. Remember, coroutine scope. Scroll down to our icon button, scope that launch, and we put this open, um, open call inside. So this will simply suspend as long as the animation is playing. Let's next talk about how we can add some draw content here. So our actual draw items. For that, we have our list. So we want to loop over that. And for each item in this list, we want to have a navigation draw item. The way this works is we want to have a so-called modal draw sheet here. And here we really can't configure that much. So we can just leave it at the defaults. Um, so we could change the shape, we could change the container color, content color, um, the tonal elevation, uh, but we just want to leave this at the default so we automatically stick to the guidelines of Material 3. But in here we do get this column scope, so we can just loop over our items and create navigation draw items here. So we want to have our items for each indexed, this one here called item, and we can construct a navigation draw item with navigation draw item. The label is just the text. So we can have a text here, item.title, selected. Well, here we want to check if our index is equal to the selected item index, which is a state we can create. This is exactly the same as what we also did for bottom navigation bars and the navigation rail. So um, selected item index by remember savable, mutable state of zero initially. Um, we want to import this for some reason. It sometimes just doesn't show that we can import this. In this case, we can scroll up to our imports and duplicate this mutable state of um, import here twice, change it to set value ones and get value ones. And then uh, the error should be gone. And we can now make use of the selected item index to highlight the specific item when it is selected. When we click on a navigation draw item, then we obviously want to change the selected item index to the current index of that item, but we also want to close our navigation draw. So we again launch a coroutine in our coroutine scope and we use our draw state to close this, um, this draw sheet. Other than that, we can also add an icon here in this icon lambda, we can just have an icon. The image vector will be dependent on whether this is selected or not. So if the index is our selected item index, so if the current item is selected, we want to have the item selected icon and else item unselected icon. And the content description is just the title of our item. Next to the icon, we can also have the batch which for a navigation draw is really just a text. So um, this here would be the badge. So it doesn't show with this little red bubble as for the navigation rail and the navigate bottom navigation bar. So here we just have a text. And the text is um, item dot batch count dot to string, but only if that's actually not null. So if there is a batch count, we display it. Otherwise we ignore it. And this would be our very first version of our navigation draw. So if we launch this, Take a look here. There we go. And here we can now click on our menu icon to open our navigation drawer. You're noticing that there is no padding at all, which I find a little bit weird um, because in all other cases, the Material 3 composables just make sure that the proper padding is applied. In this case, for some reason, it's not. So we need to do that manually by just going in here. So our navigation drawer item and we need to manually add that padding. Whoops, like this. Here we have a modifier, modifier, and we say that padding, and the padding is navigation draw, uh, drawer item defaults dot item padding. So those are just the default padding values we should apply for each item. Mm. Other than that, I would also like to add a little spacer at the very top so spacer 
with a height of 16 dp alt enter import dp and then this will already look much better if we take a look in here there we go open this you can see now we have a little bit of spacing up here we have proper padding on each side and we can select different options here and in the app we would then navigate so obviously if you would have a real navigation here after you've clicked here or when you click here then you would use your nav controller dot navigate to the corresponding route so you could of course also store the route for each navigation item and then just say you navigate to item that route or so but for that of course you need um, a nav host you need a nav controller you need to set up your navigation arguments maybe um, so that's quite a lot of work i have a separate video about that so if you want to learn about navigation definitely search for that on my channel you will find it very quickly i assume but to finish this off let's also go through the different types of navigation draw we have here on the one hand we have our modal navigation draw which i've just shown you but we also have the permanent navigation draw which comes with a permanent uh, draw sheet parameters don't change just for the permanent navigation draw we don't have a draw state because we can't uh toggle it on or off because it always shows if we launch this take a look here then you will see how this will look like as you can see um now uh, there is no point of this button anymore so in this case you wouldn't show the menu button but uh, the draw is always showing obviously for phones this is absolutely garbage don't do that um this is meant to be for a uh, larger screen so especially tablets and desktop screens so this draw is always showing you can switch between these different destinations and the content is pushed to the right here if we uh, uncomment this again scroll up and we change this to a dismissible navigation draw and a dismissible navigation draw sheet though this is basically the mix between a modal and a permanent draw so if we take a look this time you can see it pushes the content to the right but it is actually dismissible so we can um, toggle it off again not with this button in this case but um, by swiping so you could of course also um, make it toggle off if you click this button by just using your draw state again uh, but this is now a mix but again just apply this for um, a screen size of at least tablet other than that if you've enjoyed this video then you probably also enjoy jetpack compose as much as i do but with jetpack compose you can make a lot of mistakes and i have summarized 20 of the most deadly mistakes you can make with Jetpack Compose in a completely free PDF for you. If that sounds good to you, check the link down below. You can just download it for free and you have a checklist for your future project with mistakes you should definitely not make. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. I will see you back in the next one. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.